<laughs> I, um, with Carly, I, I, Crystal, I believe I, I heard an apology. <laughs> I'll wait till she comes back. Um, so this, this message will be brief, as I said, and it's a bit of a, um, I'll be a little bit rough and ready, it's, it's a bit of, bit of a story about this last week for myself, so I started a new job, it sees of a, a new job type uh, thing, but before I start, <laughs> so Lucy asked me, how's your new job? I said, oh, good question. Before I ask, I'm going to ask Lucy to come up and give us a testimony, just what you shared to me earlier about your workplace, because uh, it, it lines in just pretty well perfectly with what I'm here talking about, so just about that. All right. I probably don't need this, but anyway. Um, at work, because you saw most of you know where I work, at the Salvation Army, and over the years I've watched it become um, a business enterprise, you know, where they, you know, hand out, but, you know, there's no salvation. Anyway, um, I've been working with women, a mum with four kids. I first encountered her 12 months ago, roughly, when she, her marriage first broke up. And she rung, she was facing, you know, losing a home. That was salvaged at that time, but her coping mechanism was she fell into the drugs. Uh, and this is up in Toowoomba. And I know for some that have been at the prayer meetings, there's been at times where we've prayed for this particular team leader up in Toowoomba, that has been a barrier um, to those who are lost and broken hearted and just getting bounced around and snatched by the enemy. Anyway, she flew off the radar for a while. She rung me back a couple of weeks ago and she's in the midst of it, she's going, I can't hope, no, I need a break from the kids, I need a house. I said, so what is the house? I'm adding a bit, sorry. Um, I said, is the house going to become a babysitter? And it opened this door to big, tough questions. And I said, Jesus is throwing you a lifeline right now. I said, have you ever seen a man or a woman sinking in quicksand? She's in the midst of addiction and she's sinking and she was sinking hard. And um, the, in that moment, I said, but Jesus has given you a lifeline. No one that is doing it on their own, they'll keep sinking in quicksand, yeah? You just keep sinking. The more you struggle, the more you'll sink. I said, but God's given you a lifeline. Anyway, there was the other stuff said, and I said, if he'll meet you where you are, cry out to him and he'll meet you. Anyway she did she rings me back the next day and for eight days this woman is clean amen she's been crying out to Jesus she's been praying she rings me we pray together anyway a house comes up <laughs> yeah because she's in a one-bedroom cabin with four kids on the verge and it's you could see the line if she crosses it she's gonna lose her kids and she doesn't want it and this is what God's using. And a house comes up. And that team leader in Toowoomba, I put her forward and she goes, oh, she won't fit in a three-bedroom house. She's got four littles. Of course they'll fit. And she chose uh, another family, which is totally inappropriate. But anyway, um, so this is Thursday. And I was driving to work and... I was, you know, had to do the official stuff and go through the normal human things that I have to do when this stuff happens. And I cried out to Jesus. I said, only you can save her. Only you can move the mountain. And when Crystal was singing about the mountain, he moves the mountains, I could see he's moving it and he still is. And I started, I've been praying for this team leader for months and i um, all of a sudden, on Friday morning, I'm driving to work and the picture of Cyrus, you know, Cyrus, um, in Nehemiah, sorry, when Cyrus gives him the order to go, and, he's, and in Nehemiah it says, move away the stones so my people can come. And this woman, God showed me, she's a stone. I said, saver or remover? 
and she resigned on Friday. <laughs> Randomly. <laughs> How awesome is God? Now, I pray that God will save her and bless her elsewhere. But he's made a way for the women up in Toowoomba who have been held in addiction, being blocked by one person's pride and power and position. So keep it, please, in your prayers. I so wanted to get to the prayer meeting on Friday night and I couldn't because when she resigned, I had extra work. But amen for that. <laughs> All right. But can you please pray for these women and just the ability that God's given me to speak into their lives. Please. Amen. Amen. So good. So I want to be talking about being a witness in the workplace. And, <laughs> and I was just so blessed when Lucy told me that earlier. And in a way, it's a sense, a form of hospitality, right? But it's, it's her job is... is uh, you know, your job is to, sh- is to show hospitality, the love of Jesus Christ, and like in a very practical term and terms and ways, which is so wonderful. Uh, yeah, and so <laughs> the Lord's removing the stones where it's needed, and maybe blessing her elsewhere. Ah, uh, so sorry, I haven't prayed yet. So let's just pray for the message, Father. We just thank you for that uh, wonderful testimony, Lord, and that Lord, you're continuing to continuing to work, Lord, uh, in that place. That you've strategically put Lucy in that place, Lord, to be a connection with these women, these, these mothers, Lord, and, and of course the children that, that come with them. That you've strategically placed, Lord, all of us, Lord, by your hand in different places, whether it be at, at home with a family, Lord, or in a workplace of, of whatever description, Lord, you've put your people, Lord, out there to be, Lord, the, uh, the reality of you, Jesus, wherever we are. And um, in a sense, Lord, it's, it's hospitality wherever we are, showing, opening, the heart of Jesus, Lord, to people where we are. Father, I pray you direct and lead this word. Guide us, give us grace to, to hear whatever you're saying, Father, Lord, and let equip us, Lord. Let us let's not just be words, but, Lord, let us be equipped with the reality and the power of your presence to be what you've called us to be and to do what you've called us to do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I was saying, I started um, a new job this week. So, <clears throat> it's an interesting time for me. Uh, it's with a very large um, Mining contracting company, or they, they cover all sorts of areas, including mining. And uh, I've worked with them before, so I've had some idea of what to what to expect. An interesting start because so that started on Monday, and on Sunday night, I was telling some of the guys earlier that um, it, it was I think it was with the, the new season and the heat coming through. It just seemed like every dog in the neighbourhood, and I don't know if you know storm storm birds, the um, called Coles K O E L I think they're called. Just decided to just let it rip that night, and I honestly I didn't get to sleep till about 3:30. <laughs> so I dragged myself to work the first day on the, on the job with about three hours sleep, thinking this is not what I was envisaging. I was hoping to be all prayed up and super spiritual and bounce in there and just, you know, just be Johnny on the spot witness. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, so it was an uh, interesting start, but. So within the, f- uh, and I had to fly down to Newcastle and, and spend some time in the Hunter Valley, at some, one of the sites, with some of the guys during the week. So within a few days, I got to meet uh, a lot of the team that I was working with. And sad to say, it's like, soon, soon got the picture that this one hated that one, that one was arguing with this one, these two despised this one, this one over here had no time for those three over there, and it was just, it was just, it was just a horrible s- scenario, you know. And, and I'm, I'm familiar with the mining game. It's, it's a rough and ready uh, area. John knows. It's, it's, uh, he's got family in that, in that scene. And uh, I'll, I'll just read you the verse that, that came to mind that I was sort of grieving, <laughs> thinking, Lord, what have I got myself into? And, um, it's in Titus chapter 3, verse 3. I, I shared this on Friday night at the, um, at the prayer meeting. It says, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice, envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness, thank you Lord, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us not because of works we've done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. But honestly it was like a burden through the week, just the the underlying spirit. Yeah, there's some, I'm sure they weren't totally... uh, and wrapped in, in anger and hatred, but there was a there was certainly a very obvious level of it there. 
And I was just so sad at just the, the spirit of, of anger and bitterness and that is underlying, you know, in that particular department. And so I was challenged. I was challenged that, first of all, uh, this, this message was first going to be entitled Loving Our Enemies with the Gospel, with the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Just le- learning to not only be a witness for Jesus, but to teach people how to, to love one another through Jesus with the Gospel in a very practical, real term. Uh, real terms, because you know, there I am. We're all, if we're working full time, we're there usually five days a week or whatever it is, and full time. Um, so you know, our very life needs to be rubbing off on these people, influencing them, at least opening their eyes to thinking, why is this guy not cursing at us and, and getting aggro like the rest of us? You know, thankfully, I had had some, an opportunity to share with one of the, the managers, their senior manager. You know, he's a lovely man, but he'd been in mining all his all his life since since the early days. He's almost 70 now. And uh, he's, so he found out that I was a Christian, I'm heavily involved in the church, and, and you know, that was because we were talking about hobbies, and that kind of like, bing, came to the top of the list. And so he said, oh, wow, really? And uh, does, my, does my language offend you? Do you want me to change my, my speech? I said, I said, man, you be who you are, and I will be who I am, and we'll just see how that lands. All right? He says, okay, let's do that. So I got to share my story, how I got saved, and, and that was good. So he was, was sitting there having dinner together, and I told him how I, I met the Lord Jesus, had a face-to-face a spiritual encounter. And he's, he's had no background whatsoever in church all his life. He's almost 70 years old, got no clue. So it was a privilege to be able to share it with him, you know. And he said, so, he said, so you mean that encounter has kept you all these years? And, um, and I said, well, you know, that and many others since, but... But that was good, and, and you know, th- like he's got. Um, he was telling me how he's been married. He got married when he was 22, and he's still with his first wife. I said, I take my hat off to you. You know, God bless you, because there's a lot of people, especially in the mining game, who cannot say that. And so, um, you know, we. He's a great guy, but a rough diamond for sure. So, um, so the last quite a while, we've been focusing on this inner, inner kingdom. Uh, Pastor Chris has been uh, really exhorting us about the reality of the kingdom of God. Is if it's not, if it hasn't been established here, if it's only on a, a surface or outward um, manifestation, then we've missed it altogether, right? It, it's the essential reality of what God does is, is in the heart, and it's in the inward man, and, and it flows from here, right? And, and uh, it's been it's been a blessing. And of course, uh, um, Pastor Terry over in the, in the U.S. We have somewhat of a connection with us. I believe just finished 19 weeks on the, pardon? Hopefully 20. Oh, I thought you said that was the last one. But. Oh, I see. Okay. About almost 20 weeks on this inward kingdom. And uh, Kylie was telling me that the last one was pretty much fully on the love of God. Yeah. And he said, if you can get through the first 19 of being punched in the head <laughs> continuously by a very straight and confronting word, the love of God, it all just makes sense when it's tied together in the love of God. Anyway, so this inward kingdom. And who here would say that I am called to be an evangelist? I'll just put that out there. Amen. <laughs> yeah, a couple. But not everybody. Most, in most churches, not everyone. If you just say, who's an evangelist? Most, the majority of Christians would say, yeah, Billy Graham's an evangelist or somebody else's evangelist. You know, I, I, I'll give them offerings or something. And so that's a challenge, and, and for just the confrontation I had this week was thinking whether we call ourselves an evangelist or not, if we want to hold on to what the, what the Lord has done within us and the, in the inner kingdom, the, uh, the inward man, we will be forced to be a witness no matter what, whether you call yourself an evangelist or not. There has to be some dimension of being an evangelist, of being a witness, of being a testimony, bearing the testimony of Christ. Otherwise, you will be robbed. You will be, the enemy will... Um, ride roughshod over us and I was Mark and I were watching a, a great um, movie documentary testimony thing that a, a brother over in um, Europe somewhere was, I think it's in Holland or the Netherlands Denmark okay Denmark I'm not going to say the same thing um, and he, he was uh, he, he just had some friends follow him uh, on a seven day trip to uh, Brazil where they were, and he's doing this all over the world you'd be very familiar so he's just going there Encouraging believers, um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is, is the manifestation the Holy Spirit is given for all believers, not just the pastor or a few. 
and he just go take them out, street witnessing, seeing healings, um, demons being cast out, and so forth, on the streets, and not just him, but uh, equipping the saints to do that same, do the same. So very much um, ground level, just getting out there and, and seeing the Lord touching souls, seeing people getting getting saved, getting baptized. But he made a great point where he's having a, a sort of a a, a, um, a time of training and equipping with with a lot of the people that he's working with, the Christians there. And he said he talked about um, China and during the time of Mao Zedong when communism first came into into China. And he said about that time, he said about 80% of the Christians fell away when when communism came in. And then he pulled himself up. He said 80% of Christians didn't actually fall away. He says what happened was it was revealed that 80% of believers weren't actually believers. That was a strong statement. So when the when the heat came, about 80% of the church melted, and the remaining ones were the ones who they were the remnant who built the underground church through the remaining decades. So what he was saying is that if we're going to live godly in Christ Jesus, hey, the Bible says we will. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> Let's just all welcome uh, Ethan Samuel. Sorry, the message can't compete with you, baby. <laughs> First time to church. Bless you, Ethan. <laughs> About time you came to church. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. oh, he's been coming the last nine months. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> okay, so... So the, the point he was saying is if, if we're going to live the life, if we're going to believe, be believers, if we're going to be Christians, we will, there is going to be an element of persecution, right? It's, it's, it's guaranteed. If there's not, at any time, there's something wrong. So, um, so as I was saying, so if we're going to be believers, we, there will be some form of persecution. So back to the, my workplace. Um, there's a couple of... Uh, I was, I went down to the lake yesterday just for a quiet time of, because uh, it was quite an intense week, uh, just for a quiet time of prayer and just enjoying the sun and watching the ducks <laughs> and just praying. And I was, so, I was blessed. So the Lord gave me a couple, of, a couple of verses just about the workplace, about being where I am at this time. Because honestly, this morning, I was, uh, at some stage I'm thinking, Lord, if this is not of you, get me out of here. You know, I don't want to be in a place that's, that's not your design. Um, and he gave me John chapter 21, which is not, uh, it's, it's the passage where Jesus is talking to Peter and says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, tend my lambs. And then, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? You know I love you, Lord. Feed my lambs. And, uh, and the Lord was saying, look, I've got people in there, in this, in this organization, we're the rough diamonds, and I want, I need a witness. I want somebody in there. To just be, and it might be just a handful out of the hundreds and hundreds that are there. It might be just the handful that Lord wants wants me to speak to. But it was just that confidence, you know, that that, that God, who's very, very big, very intelligent, very, of all the millions and millions of workplaces in the world, and all the millions of Christians, and all the millions of unsaved people, He can just coordinate the amaz- the most minute detail to put us, put John Russell, like, okay, you, know, you go over there. There's so-and-so over there that needs someone to speak to. Peter, you go over there. Um, you do this. You do that. And it's just amazing. So it was just encouraging, you know. And, um, and there's another verse that he gave me, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. This is the Apostle Paul saying, um, we will not boast beyond limits, We, but... We boast only with regard to the area of influence God has assigned to us to reach even to you. I think in some version it talks about the field of influence. Or the, um, and the Lord was just saying, look, there's, there's a, a, an area of influence that I'm giving to you in this place. And it might be just me and the desk next to me. I don't know, it doesn't matter the size of it. But it's that area that God's giving that he's assigned to me. So again, it was a word of encouragement. And there was a couple of other verses which I won't share, but... Um, just saying, no, this is it. Stick with it. Just, and, and I did pray afterwards, okay, Lord, I'll stick with it. But if, if, it's, if 
it's going to be a short stay. If you want me to stay there for, stick with it for three months, then that's good with me. <laughs> Let's go. Or for three years, whatever it is. I, I did 18 years before, so um, you know, I'm not, I can do the hard yards when I need to, but I don't, do, don't want to do it unless it's the Lord. And, um, and again, just, just meditating on um, a, f- a little while ago, I was sharing about how you know, we are the temple and how Jesus... In the zeal, in those two times that he cleaned out the temple in Jerusalem, you know, it says zeal for his house had, clean, had, had um, over-consumed him. And I was just aware that I just believe in the last few months, working at a very casual, cruisy family uh, business, where I've had time, it's quite casual, I could sort of go in there at any time and have lots of time to pray and just to let the Lord do some stuff in my life, and it's been so wonderful, and now all of a sudden it's kind of like the exact opposite. And thinking, Lord, I don't want to lose what you've given. And there again, it's like guarding, um, not, not just defensively guarding what we've been given, but taking uh, an aggressive stance for the Lord in love to not just, not just exist in our workplace, but to advance, be an aggressive, like um, and Jesus said, we are the light of the world, we are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its savour, it's good for what? Nothing but to be. So if you're feeling a bit trodden underfoot, Lord, have I lost my saviour? Do I need, do I need rejuvenating of my, of, of the bite of the gospel, of the of the love, the power, the, the presence of Jesus in my workplace? So one week out, I'm feeling the challenge. So in this workplace, we've got foul mouth miners, <laughs> and we've got very smart professionals, very very clever, very well off materially. Uh, and so you've got these two extremes, and both of them quite, can be quite intimidating at times. And there I am. I want to love Jesus. I want to walk with you. And so I need to be an influencer, not overly influenced, but an influencer, as well as do a really good job, as well as not just be some Spiro nutcase, but actually do my job, do it well, and earn the respect of, of the people that I'm working with and for. So um, encouraging, as I said, to get those words, yes, I've got you in the right place. Now just trust me. Okay, so um, it was just really timely that Mark came over and said, like, do you want to watch this, this video? And it's about, really about living the life, just being, um, again, not forgetting it's the inward kingdom, but letting that manifest out, not just um, taking it to our workplace and, and letting it where it's appropriate, those, those God-given opportunities to um, step out, pray, speak, whatever it is. So t- this is just, just to... To let's make, just like Peter was saying, hospitality, let's allow ourselves perhaps to be stretched in this area or be mindful. And I want to do the same with the area, but just being the witness in the workplace, just having confidence that God has got us where he has got us for a purpose and that greater is he that's with us, than us than he that's in the world. And just, um, I love what this brother was saying last night. He says, look, you know, he's, he's, this particular guy is very confident and stepping out and, and um, discerning demons and casting them out and praying for healing and words of knowledge, all that sort of stuff. But just encouraging people, just just start with what you've got. You know, just start with the, as in all things in the, in the Word, start with the, the two talents that you've got, or the one talent, and it says we use them as we exercise the graces of God that, you know, that we, our faith grows and we step out. And, um, and uh, like today, to be honest, I was feeling quite a heaviness. I was quite just <laughs> meditating. I'm going back to, I'm going up, Another site was this, this week to Mackay, and I spoke to the project manager before I went last week, and it was like, just expletives over the phone, do, 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 wait, I'm just roughing you, don't take me welts and all, and yeah, okay, good on you, I'll see you soon. So I'm going to know what I'm, what I'm walking into. Um, but honestly, I was just feeling like a heaviness, like a spiritual oppression today, just, just praying about work and thinking, man, what is this? This is a, like it was a demonic thing, so it's not just about, it's just not, not just a, an intellectual conversation that we're going to have is not just a, you know, well, this is this is my club and what's your club and <clears throat> it's it's the spiritual reality of people, clean cut, nice people in workplaces, who are bound by demons who have given themselves to sin and to the enemy and Satan and he is their god and we are supposed to go in there um, as co-workers and workmates and by the love of God, influence them to the point where they repent. They, they have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Their heart is melted in, love, in his love. And they swap kings from the, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And I've, 
I was thinking today, because you know, the enemy can rob you of all encouragement if you let him. And I was just thinking today of a couple of workplaces in the past where there's one in, um, I worked for a bank at one time, wasn't there for, for very long, but long enough, and one young lady ended up coming along to church and, and getting saved. Um, so I was blessed, and, and, it, and it wasn't me preaching to her, it was, it was, it was a contact through me, she, she said, oh, you're a Christian, aren't you? So it was just an open door where I was able to speak to her a little bit, and then some sisters from the church got in touch, she ended up getting saved, then her, her boyfriend at the time got saved, his brother got saved, her brother got saved, her brother ended up marrying my sister, it was like, <laughs> so my sister wouldn't have got married if it wasn't, you know, for me just being a Christian on the spot, so... <laughs> So, what, so how important it is to be just to obey those those promptings? That, you know, just to be what we're called to be and where we are. Uh, there's another. Some of you may know Margaret Guerin from Lord of the Breakthrough Church. So, I worked with her years ago. My first first job in Brisbane, and um, and she was she was probably the the one who spoke the most about about my Christianity at work. And it was usually with goading questions. Oh yeah, but what about? Because she was uh, quite a staunch Catholic at that stage. And so after three years I left, didn't hear anything about it, and then years later <laughs> I went to Lord of the Breakthrough Church to visit a, to see a visiting speaker, and there she was giving the notices at the church. Yeah, praise God, I was, oh, wow, I was so blessed, so, so happy, so encouraged. Um, and I, you know, I just didn't know, just didn't know what had happened to her and, and the rest of the, but in the meantime the Lord was bringing other people. So she she gotten saved, and now she's, she's done um, Holy Fire, School. She's finished that training. She's preaching a, a, a pastor. I think a uh, youth pastor at a church. So, yeah, what a blessing! And all I, I remember the whole time of that job, I hated that job. <laughs> there was spiritual battles. I think there was. I'm sh- pretty sure there was Masonic stuff going in there. There was um, a couple of homosexuals working there, and it was just intense spiritually. It was just, uh, and uh, yeah, but made it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> But it's not like thousands, but you know, you just, it's not about the numbers, it's just doing the ones that we've, uh, what we've called to do. So, so I don't know who's at this downer place. Oops, I shouldn't have mentioned the name. Edit that. <laughs> um, at this workplace, but just believing that. And, uh, look, I might not even preach them. I may just be at one point uh, of connection where when someone be soft and someone begins to think. They may have a sister or a brother who's a Christian, and just one, no one more person at work is enough to tip them over the edge to start asking some questions. And so, um, I believe it's very important not to, not in all, like in all aspects of ministry, not to go to the to the stereotype. Well, the, the evangelist looks like this, or the pastor looks like this, or the prophet looks like this, but just to be what God's called us to be. Um, and I. I I hadn't thought about this, but while we were during the worship, actually, while Crystal and Mark were leading, uh, I was reminded of a dream that I had years ago. Um, and I, I think it speaks to the workplace, and it may, may speak to someone here, but it, I believe the Lord was just reminding me again. And in this dream, I was uh, in the Wellington Harbour, so I was born in Wellington. I grew up there as a young man. And so I, was, I was, saw a picture of the Wellington Harbour, and then a submarine surfaced in the harbour itself, big, long steel thing. And the next picture was, uh, I was standing on the bow of the submarine looking back over the length of the submarine. And as I looked over, um, I saw the whole harbour was full of warships, uh, battleships of every shape and description, uh, yeah, aircraft carriers, battleships, frigates, small things, big things. And all of them were facing the same direction. Um, all, all the military, um, what do you call it, navy, grey, grey sort of colour. I thought this was a, an obvious picture of the army of God. All all different sizes, and you know, just like the Lord's given us all different graces, different callings, different equippings, different purposes, different locations. Um, so we're all, yeah, Melvin's just going nuts over here. <laughs> um, and there it was, and, and, but only, I, there, I'm sure there were other submarines, but they were doing what submarines do, is, which is be under the water. So this is the only submarine was, that was in the hub, was this one here, the one that I was standing on. And all the rest were above water, obviously. And then, uh, and it was a beautiful day, clear blue sky, and the sun was just coming up, it was early morning. And I looked to my right and I saw three uh, commercial airline, three commercial jets just flying off in, in unison, in, uh, what do you call it, um, formation, thanks. And I knew they were commercial jets, and they're brand new, all of them. And um, anyway, what I got from the dream, and it's, it's stood at me so strongly, 
is that is the hiddenness of the submarine. It's the, like every, you may be called to be an aircraft carrier where you're supporting many others, a smaller battleship, a frigate, maybe just a, a, a small you know, four-man carrier with a, with a gun that's, that's called, got its, its duty. But for me, the, the issue about the submarine is that it's hidden. It's, it's a hidden thing. And I believe the, uh, for me, I believe that's the majority of my calling. It's a hidden, it's a hidden place. It's a support place. It's, it's coming behind others. It's, and even in the workplace, it's, it's not being the great guy at the front. It's just speaking to those ones, those twos, in the, in the background, speaking, planting seeds. Um, I think that the issue with the aircraft, like, you know, vessels, whether it's cars or ships or planes, whatever, they often speak about our calling, our ministry, our, our work. And um, the, the aircraft, I believe, all, again, spoke about... Um, work because they were all commercial aircraft. They weren't military, they weren't. And so I believed, you know, the Lord was saying, look, I'm calling you to be in this place of hiddenness, but it's in the workplace. Um, and just do, it's, it's working as unto me. And that's what we just so be confident about is that whatever we do, whether it's you've got your, you know, Melvin Ministries at 7 o'clock every morning on TV with the 3 billion people watching, or if it's just Melvin at the post office, it's either one, it's working for... It's work. <laughs> You'll be rather than later. It's working for the Lord Jesus, and confident, you know that, that that's that that's um, what we're doing in, in in His time, in His place. Okay, so um, Acts chapter one, verse eight. Cannot go without s- saying this verse. But you will receive power, the Lord Jesus said to the twelve disciples, and all the disciples who are waiting for Him. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So power being dunamis, and um, and I think it's just worth saying. So so we've been in a church, and Mark and I were talking about this last night. Being in a church where we've seen even in here in Brisbane, people, young people going out praying for the sick on the, on the street, seeing healing, seeing manifestation, manifestations, but. Um, but no stickability in the people who made a commitment. You know, they'd be convinced, okay, I know there's a God. Yep, something's happened. Something supernatural's happened to me. But within months, or certainly within the year, nowhere to be seen, not grounded, not, um, not discipled, you know, not sticking with the Lord Jesus, not, not converted. That inward kingdom hadn't been established. And so just so important when we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about, yes, I mean, outward manifestations, but the power to change the person, the power to change the heart, the power to change the affections, the power to change who's God in my life, you know, that actual, a, a, literally a new creation. And so just, um, just so aware of that, you know, you can't, it, it's one, one good thing about working with really rough diamonds is that you can't fake a transformation, you know, it's, it's, either, it's either they're transformed or they're not, something's happened on the inside or they're not. And that's, in one way, that's, that's something I really love about working with, guys who are just blunt straight to the point and just you know there's no mistake about where they stand um but it just means that that we have to be equally i have to be equally as staunch if you like in the love of god and humility and purity and truth and and not wavering and courage you know and i'm challenged i i need to not be a wet fish and a a spineless gutless whatever and you know just to but to be honest it's easy i find it easier to talk into a rough bloke out of the mind than I do to some educated professional. That's that's a just it's a different challenge, but it's a it's a challenge. But um, you know, I just had to get to the point where I said, Lord, I don't care if I if, if I don't make it another week in this job, if I lose it, I don't care. I I just I don't want to spend the rest of my life not you know being trodden underfoot of men, being not being salt, not being uh, a real witness for you, not living for you. God, if I can't live with you, Jesus, in my workplace, get me out of there or I'll get myself out. We've got to, it's got to be real. I've got to have Jesus sitting with me at my desk. I've got to have him. Um, so there's no, I haven't got my lamp under a bushel. I've got, you know, I don't have to be a nut like a, you know, standing on my desk every five minutes and preaching a sermon, but, but not veiled, you know, able to speak no matter who the person is. If it's a CEO, if it's a CFO, um, just free enough and bold enough to say, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I love him. He is real. And, God bless you if you disagree, but I'm not changing, you know, <laughs> and no matter what, who you are, and, um, and it, it is a challenge because I find these, you know, these are a lot of them, so I'm an accountant, pray for me, 
I find a lot of accountants can be just nice people, but just not bothered about eternity. I was just, what is with that? What's just crazy, right? So I think that is, that's what I'm blessed with. Probably people like Lucy that you're often working with is, is and what Jesus said, it's the, it's the prostitutes, the harlots, the drunkards, the tax collectors, who are the first into the kingdom. Not that they're any more deserving or any less deserving, it's just they're the ones who know that they need the kingdom, you know. Yeah, so did I. Um, so yeah, just those verses that we probably all know, but it's worth just saying. Romans 1, 16, the Apostle Paul, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And I believe it's not just that he, was, he wasn't timid about sharing, but the gospel is something, it works. It's real, it's the real, it's the truth, it's the reality. And it's not something to be ashamed about. So if you said, you know, uh, by comparison, I think you could say that um, the law was something to be, in a sense, was something to be ashamed about because it had the requirements of what we're supposed to do, but not the power to change us where he says, now we've got the full story of Jesus, of the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, where it's got the requirements, but it's got the power, it's got the grace, the, the, the blood to change us. So I am not ashamed of that. That's what he's saying, this message is nothing to be ashamed about. And that's something that the, in the principalities over Australia, over nations, the lie that Satan tries to feed into us is that there's something to, to be intimidated about against you know, intellectuals, against aggressive people, against left people on the left or whoever it is, but just to constantly, we need to be constantly renewing our mind and debunking those lies of Satan um, to say, no, this is the right, this is, this is right, this is what people need to hear in love like, and in patience and in humility, knowing how long it took me to get off my high horse and repent of my pride. Um, and so, yeah, another key. So it's one thing to say, okay, I'm going to go in and be bold. But this, this other, and just thinking about how the guys I was talking about, there's this real lack of uh, kindness between them. So this well-known verse, verses uh, from the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, which Jesus says, You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that, they may be, so that you may be sons of, the, of your Father who is in heaven. And so just the Lord, really felt the Lord impressing. Look, it's not just about being a witness. Literally pray for your workforce. Pray for your workmates. Pray for that place. Pray. It's powerful. Pray for that the Lord will soften, that the Lord will open opportunities, that, that the demonic will um, uh, be restrained over that place. And literally, you know, workplaces, we don't see them. Look, it's not a, it's not a temple of worship for, of idols. It's not a, it's not a satanic you know, ritual place. It's, it's just a business. But I believe that with the heart of the people who work there, they bring their idols, they bring in their demons, they bring their, their evil and the oppressions. And you, can, you can feel it, you know, walk into a place. And so pray, that's such a, a, an incredible key, that an important key. Pray for our workmates, pray for our, our places of, of business. And um, you know, I think it's something even that Pastor Terry was saying, uh, you see, I've heard him say it a number of times, he says, look, all these sermons are great, all these meetings are great, but this is not where it's, where it counts. It's in, it's, in, it's in the world. It's in our workplaces. It's in an everyday life. That's where Christianity, that's where the reality of it is tested. That's where the, the beauty of it is seen. Um, and that's where the rubber hits the road, where the coal face, if you like. So just, um, I think it's Romans 13, isn't it? Be, do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So that's our mandate. I'm just going to finish on one last verse in Jude. Chapter 1, because that's the only chapter in Jude, right? But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. So another thing, I would just encourage us all to be prayed up, to let the love of God be continually flowing over. We need it when we're going to rough antagonistic places, 
either the world is going to harden us or we are going to soften them. It's, bless you, Lucy. So there's no middle ground. Two kingdoms, and we need to be affected. We need to be blessed. We need to be, we need to be confident that we are loved, that we are walking in his love, and that that love is enough to overflow, to keep us, but also to impact those around us. So I'm just going to invite you to stand, and we're just going to end with a short time of prayer, stirring up the gift that's within us, praying in the Holy Ghost. So, um, yeah, Father, I just pray that, Lord, that this, that this word would be a reality, not just words, but, Lord, we need the reality of you every single day, Jesus. We need your fire, Lord, within us. We need your Holy Spirit present, working within us, Lord. Your refreshing love and your mercy, Lord, just keeping us, strengthening us, Lord, sharpening our spirit, keeping us, Lord, in, in the workplace or in, in, the, in the home or wherever we are, wherever our everyday work and life is, Father. We need the reality of heaven, of your kingdom, Lord, within us, overflowing through us, Jesus. We need not to be timid. Lord, we need to come against timidity and, and, and uh, a sense of shame or embarrassment that the enemy would try and put upon us. But freely, Lord, to be able to reclaim, Lord, in, in humility and honesty, Lord, to the purity, the power of, your, of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, Father. We pray for that fire within us, Lord God. We pray for, Lord, just the stirring of your spirit, Lord God. The fresh living waters, refreshing living waters in our spirit, bubbling up, Jesus. And Lord, we just pray, God, as we spend these few minutes just staring up the gift that's within us, Lord God, that you'd so um, uh, encourage us throughout the week, Lord. Bring to mind, Father God, where the enemy's trying to oppress and that we'd stir up the gift that you've given to us, the gift of tongues, Lord God, the gift of encouragement, the gift of the Word of God, the gift of fellowship, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's just pray for the next few minutes, guys. Just sing it out. Don't, don't be shy. Just make it loud. Rosura basatana robosura bashatana maruko sira barado sura batashana rebekira ba roho sura batana rebesita na marusha robo shura bakande rebekita bora bora satana rebekisa rebesita ra boro shura boro shambarne bora bakata na rebesira barado sura baro shabanda rebesita ra baki baroto robo sura bara baramba bara shite 